Right, we are back down at Carden Park. Fairly gloomy day, but someone is here that will brighten it up. I have brought the Yorkshire weather with me. You certainly have, mate. How are you? What are we going to do? We're going to do it now. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> That's almost illegal. What we're going to do this morning is a really interesting video, which is James Robertson's top five products of 2022. And I'm also going to guess what those five products are. Have you wrote your guesses down? I will reveal that at the very end. Right, got you. Right, so we're going to do this as uh, very much five down to one, and we'll start off with, uh, well, number five. Is there an order? There's no order. There's no order. I can probably think of an order, but it'll take me a while. No, no, what There's have no we got? Order. The first thing, Andy, I don't know if I told you, but I went to the Masters, <laughs> it isn't the head cover. My, this is probably the number, not quite the number one, and similar to one of the clubs that you did on my channel, it's not exactly brand new. Shall I hit it first? Or? Yes, hit it first, then we'll do the review. So the big thing for me here, I love versatile golf clubs. I love being able to pick a trajectory, a ball flight, a window, if you will. Yeah. And this, for me, I've got a broken tee peg here, Andy. Well, look at that. I ain't going to use a full one. That's I can't uh, look down because I'm not going to reveal the club. So I'm keeping this under wraps. As well as being heavily versatile, I love the sound this makes. That might give people a bit of a clue as to what it is. And they are being replaced actually at the end of this year, which I'm slightly worried about because I'm not sure how they can make them better. But for me... Oh! Did you get that sound? That's a stinger of a shot yeah. as well. Like that's everything that I want out of this kind of club. And the club is, Andy. Here we go, big reveal. The Titleist TSI 3-3 wood. Okay. I've been a huge fan of Titleist fairway woods since I was a junior golfer. I just think they absolutely nailed it with this one. I'd never really change the adjustability on it. I've always kind of left that way. It was, I'll even tell you where it is, where it's fitted to. It's in the heel, that weight. Uh, and I just have it A1 set in. Jam pack full of technology. It sounds fantastic. Just a wonderful golf club. They're very much a go-to club for you? Absolutely. If ever I'm struggling with driver, which is most of the time, this is certainly a club that I go to. You can see there. It's gone a long, long way. Yeah, it has gone a long way. And it's, it's, it's a nice low uh, trajectory. It gets quite windy where I play a lot. And generally, we're going to hit the fairway most of the time with it. That's number five. That is. Are you going to have a go? I'm, I'm going to have a go now. I'm slightly worried about my selections because... Uh, mm. So what are your thoughts on this, Andy? You'll have tested this, will you? I've tested it. Interestingly enough, I don't carry a three wood. Right. Uh, and again, just going back to, I don't know which video is coming out first, but my top five selection had um, easier to hit options, let's yeah. say, at the top end of the bag. So I kind of stay away from them. Um, it's a beautiful looking club. I mean, the one thing about uh, this Titleist range, it's stunning yeah. to look at. I will t I'll tell you what, I haven't hit it for a while either. I can't believe how far your ball has gone, by the way. That's absolutely I'm going to tell you something in a second, Andy, wow. where I wish... Uh, I wish something was slightly different on it, and I hope it might change on the new ones we've seen being seeded. Well, that was a really bad strike swing from me, sorry. I've leaked that out way to the right, and it's probably why it's not in my bag. One of the first bad swings we've seen from <laughs> it yesterday, is. Actually. It wasn't a great shot, to be fair, so I'd be hard to judge it on that alone. Yeah. And, uh, but I will say for me, like I said, the three woods in particular, in general, yeah. are uh, slightly more difficult for me to use than obviously they are for you. Very good. The one thing I'd change, do you remember the three woods of old? I wish it had that fulcrum on it for the centre point. Yeah, yeah. Not the TS. I think they've lost a bit of identity with that. But apart from that, I think it's a wonderful club. I'm going to have another go of it. <laughs> I can't judge it on that. You can't. To be fair, you'd probably be more TSI two, would you maybe, if you wanted to? Yeah, I would, more... without doubt, yeah. Yeah. Love that golf bag as well. That's lovely, that. It was a similar sort of swing, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of a heely strike. Very Identical just, ball flight. Very much across it. Right, so James, first uh, club out of the way. In general, what has been your thoughts on 2022 in terms of club releases? What do you think? Club releases, I think it's been an interesting year. I think, obviously, we kicked off with uh, the Stealth Driver, yeah, the, yeah, Rogue, the Rogue ST Driver, which I've so, I was sort of... I'm torn between them because I, I do enjoy tailor-made drivers. A lot of people think I've got some kind of prejudice towards them or some kind of bias towards them, but I just think they're good. Like, yeah. I really enjoy them. I don't think the carbon age is going to be as long as we maybe think it is, okay. personally, because there's just not that much different, is there? Like, if it was that much better, 
you would hit it 15 yards further than every other yeah, club, yeah. but we don't. So I find that interesting. I think the Callaway feels and sounds amazing, yeah. but they could have marketed that better with a different name. I think going back to a, an yeah, old yeah. name yeah, yeah. is never really something that people want yeah. to see. I think it'd be interesting in terms of tailor-made, what they do next year, and yeah. whether or not carbon faces appear in their hybrids and fairways. I said this and yesterday in, uh, in my stealth D, D, sorry, DUI, DHY yeah. and UDI videos because when we first saw twist facing the drivers, yeah. we were like, well, why on earth isn't that yeah. in? And then it came. And it came. So I wonder if that's just a little bit yeah. of a... It will be interesting. Right, okay, so first of all, hugely impressed with where James managed to get that three wood down to on this oh, par four. Oh, stop it, Andy, stop it, carry on. We'll have a look at that in a, uh, in a minute or two, but you say we can actually stop here where you've landed. Uh, we can stop landed. here if you promise, one second. Mm -hmm. This is for this is for club number two from James. This isn't a club. Promise oh. not to lose this. Hello. This is very special to me. Is that your last one? <laughs> that was my last one. This is the um, so for me. Um, I'll let you. Oh, hold it. Yeah. The um, is it tour response? Tour response, but the stripe version. Yeah, yeah. So this is the ball. It's my last one that I had hole in one with. Oh at wow. The Wakefield Trinity Rugby League Golf Day with a couple of our mates. So we've got water on the next hole. Do you trust me to play it off the tee? No, <laughs> absolutely not. So I, I'm going to show you something as well. So I was going to include the Kirkland ball in this because I think the Kirkland ball for the value is exceptional. Yeah. Literally a pounder ball, put yeah, it head-to-head yeah. against a Pro V1. Unbelievable. And it just it fights its corner, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but I've actually gone for this one because I thought the story behind it, this was a four iron from like 220 yards um, and it was in an actual golf day as well. So it was just a nice feeling. But I had a hole in one with the Kirkland with Chris up in Scotland at Archfield Links. That was 140 yard with so a pitching you, wedge. So you've had two all in ones this year. Two all in ones in two months. And um, I'll show you, so we got it framed because Archfield gave me a lovely flag with all in one on. Yeah. And then I got the course planner and the ball. So you can overlay this on now because I'll send it to you. And you're going to get another one today in the match. Maybe, but it's not going to be with this because we're going to chip this onto the green. We're not going to lose it. Put it away it, again. And I'm going to put it away again so I'm going to frame it. <laughs> right, let's see, the, the, uh, let's see the shot from here then. So we are this is where James's three would finished. Did you get any yardage or anything, or as to where we've got to go? I mean, no, I'm going to feel it. I reckon Ooh. it wants to land about 55. Okay. Um, and I'm going to let you play with that one. So, so I've got. Yeah, I, I mean, we need to be on that hole over there, where there's a, a huge pond, and then. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly why we've come so close. Not that I don't. Not that you didn't just lose those two balls that you just hit off that tee. We'll, we'll not discuss that. Um, but I'll just hit this one in, and then I want to see if you can, can get you closer. Just mention that. I mean, we just, we were, I thought we'd agreed we'd, uh, we'd forget about that. I didn't film that bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, nicely played. Right, Andy, let's see if you can get inside my shot. I'm putting your wedge back in the bag because oh. I've got, um, did, well, did... I've got one of my top fives. Okay. I know what this is. Yeah. This is probably the top one, is it? It's the most interesting one. And uh, yeah, it's a chipper. It's a chipper. So it appeared in my top five. Um, probably the weirdest club I've seen from anyone this year. So yeah, yeah. Ping. It's not probably designed for this 55 yards and I've not played many from it, but we'll give it a bit of a go, I think. Nice. Yeah, that's a good effort, actually. That's on the green, you flag high. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, the interesting thing is that's a real awkward position, 50 yards, yeah. again, for kind of average golfers, and uh, it got there. Now, it wasn't the best, but it got there. The reason why I chose that ball is mainly predominantly for putting. Okay. So we'll get down there and we'll I'll show you a bit more about it. Right, James, so I've just switched the ball out from where your wedge just landed. This is a birdie, isn't it? Uh, that's a birdie up, mate, yeah. Um, so... Now, you said there's something interesting, particularly about the ball with putting, which... Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the big thing for me, like, I, I've worked hard on my putting because it used to be a massive weakness of my game. But the idea that you can get great feedback from a golf ball like this, there's a few... I mean, I don't understand why they made it green. Like, you put it down and it, it almost... You can't see it as well as maybe if they made that stripe red or blue, even a black stripe or something like that. I think knowing tailor-made, they will probably make it... Uh, what do they call it? They call it my. Oh yeah, yeah. That so my you, my yeah, tailor made. Yeah. Yeah. So I think eventually they might do that. They did a similar thing with the picks, didn't they? But I find that so easy to line up. So if you've got the right line, that's the first thing. And then I know 
if I make a good stroke on this, see the feedback on that ball there? So all I've done there is hit it too hard through the brake, the ball's finished right behind the hole and on its axis. So, so you're happy with the strike in other words? Yeah, I was yeah, happy with the strike, yeah, yeah it, was, it was fine. Um, so almost like a training aid as well as yeah, you're learning as training you go aid, around. But you're learning as you go around. So if I hit, so if, say if I hit a bad putt towards you now, and you focus in on that ball, you'll see that that yeah. lo loses that axis. So then you almost know, right, I've come across yeah. that, I've come too far from the inside, I've shut the face, etc., etc. The next club for me, the best bit of equipment. We both agree on this. Yeah, we do, yeah. Like this has been, for me, an absolute game changer. Yeah. So, Stroke Lab, when it first came out, I thought it looked a little bit gimmicky, I wasn't too sure. And then the more you get the feel of it, for long putts especially, like my lag putting has been terrible, but then I sort of match it with this, I call, I'll always call this a number seven. Yeah. Like I'll always call it a number yeah, yeah. seven shape head. It's a Toulon Las Vegas design. It's not anything special, it's off the rack. Yeah. 35 inches, I believe. But then I went to the Callaway specialist and said, guys, I'm putting exceptionally well with this. I've been hot. I've held so, you know, you know, Chris, don't you, my mate, Chris yeah, Dennis? Yeah. I've held so many puts against him and Gaz. Yeah. Literally, they hate it. Yeah, I've seen They despise it. So I went to go and see, because it wasn't fitted. I'm a massive believer to go and get fitted for your golf clubs so that you then know there's nothing better out there for you. And randomly, the fitter said, you know what, James? I would fit you into this. The same, right. The, the same club. Perfect. So whether or not that was a bit of a confidence boost yeah, as yeah. well, I'm not entirely sure. But I matched that with this, and I must become a little bit more just happier. Obviously, that wasn't the best attempt at the birdie putt. But if we well, these kind of things, it's all about confidence, isn't it? Absolutely. And, uh... and it, it's also, Andy, thinking about your, your expectations. So me and Chris, Chris is a really good putting coach, and we work a lot on um, tour stats. So yeah. say from there, I had, what, 12 feet maybe for birdie? Yeah. So uh, make percentage on tour there would be around 50%. Yeah, I was going to say 40%. Yeah, even. yeah so yeah, yeah. why would I expect to stand up on video with you and hold it first time? Wouldn't necessarily happen from here. It's even less. That's a terrible read. I've given you a horrible example there, Andy. But for me, my putting stats have improved massively yeah, with yeah. this. Um, so that's certainly something well, which... Yeah. Definitely in the bag. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm it's in... not going anywhere either. No. I and... change putters more than my pants quite often. Yeah, and to be honest with you, the interesting thing is, again, if you watch uh, my channel a lot, then you'll also know that that's uh, very much the putter in my bag, the exact same putter. And for all the same reasons, the feel off the face is unreal. There's a bit of, and I don't know whether it was in the previous model, there's a bit of uh, perimeter weighting yeah. that's um, in that, which just, again, for me, just helps um, with... Well, I suppose forgiveness was certainly squaring that face up a little bit and uh, it's been really good. What I do need to do is, Chris, when am I getting my putting lesson? Yeah, he offered you one, didn't he? Yeah. Right, that's three down for James. Next up is, uh, well, we're going to play. He's asked me to drive into a position with 150 out. So, uh, you know what's not next up? Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah, that's going back in the bag. That's going, going back in water. the bag. But, uh, Obviously, it gives away a little bit of a clue from 150. I'm assuming this is going to be an iron, James. It is going to be an iron. It's the irons that... Um, I'm not going to mention the hole in ones again because it's getting boring, but it's an iron that I was fitted for this year. Let's get an exact yardage on that. Got 164 playing 166. Uh, that's actually a nice number for my 7 iron if there's no wind, which I don't think there is. Um, I loved my old Mizuno JPX 921 tours. Loved them to bits. They felt great. They were brilliant. I... I've tried to change my game a little bit. It's not quite where I want it, but it's, I feel like it's improving. And the shafts weren't quite right. I had Project X's in there. Uh, I went down to Mizuno when the new stuff got fitted, like we do when we get to test products, uh, and I actually moved into the KBS S taper. Yeah, so the first kind of, um, first go out with them really, I just played really well with them. And it's something which I didn't really want to change the iron makeup in my heads, but uh, the guys um, Matt at Mizuno, Highly recommended that I did because I was just getting a lot less movement on that golf ball. So let's go straight to this flag. Let's see. Yeah, good strike. Solid. Yeah, middle of the green, isn't yeah. it? And that's something where perfect yardage yeah, as right well yardage up there, top, top deck. Tier, that is. That's something where with the JPX 91 tours that I was using. Yeah, but hang on, what's just before you reveal? So reveal what is that club? It's Mizuno 223 irons. Okay, stunning. Really, really nice. And yeah. I think it's just a head and a shaft combo, which for me works great. It's something which I'd probably go as far as saying, go and get fitted. Yeah, Like this absolutely. is something massively for me that, that yeah. generally works. 
I feel that ball flight you saw there, if Andy put a shot tracer on it, which I'm sure he did. Yeah, we did, yeah. That was quite a straight ball flight to the middle of the green. Yeah. Pulled it a little bit. It's not a flag you're going to miss right yeah. by any stretch. Yardage spot on, though. Absolutely, yeah. And that's something which, with the strike, was, was great. Yeah. But with the old clubs, may have turned over a little bit. Okay. Only a couple of yards, but that's enough yeah, to miss the green, tipping. take a bad bounce, yeah. and then duff a few chips and make nice. double. And does anything feel like a Mizuno? No. No. Nah. No. They are real. I mean, to be honest with you, I just said uh, that um, I knew these were the irons in James's bag and I come really close to swapping out to them. I wanted to do a mix of HMBs and 223s. And out of the range, to be honest with you, this year, the 223s were very much the kind of standout product in... Uh, yeah. There's still a bit of forgiveness in them, really, isn't there? 221 and 225, isn't the other, it? The, with the, the others, yeah. Yeah, and for me, the 221's tiny. Yeah. And the 225's a little bit too tuggy. Yeah, yeah. Like Matt said, do you want to go 225 in the 4 iron? I was just like, no. Why? Yeah, yeah. It, it just doesn't look the same as the 5 iron. Yeah, which was the other odd thing they'd done. And then yeah, we had a hole in one with the 4 iron, so it worked well. I'm sick of hearing about these hole in ones. <laughs> Randy, are you going to have a go with... Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. In fact, no, I won't use that. I'll, um... It, I, I, Andrew, I, no. No. Only, it's only a little bit of water. It's 150 carry. Surely you trust me to hit that. I'll tell you what then, yeah, let me give you your hybrid. <laughs> there you go. Have that back. Right. So, I mean, first of all, I am a big fan of these clubs anyway. Uh, from my initial review, some co I came so close to buying these things. Probably a different shaft than I would use, but um, what I really love about these clubs is they feel so good. Yeah. Nice, nice middle of the road club, aren't they? Oh, they're beautiful. Oh. Great strike. Yeah, just I think it's probably Shaft that's done that. Cut across a little bit. But again, what you know, the interesting bit for me was this. 223, almost, you know, it's very much a player's iron, definitely off the bottom grooves, mm -hmm. and still manages to get somewhere Which down is, there. Like I said, it wasn't perfect, but that's the you know, that's the thing that's changed for me in modern irons. Yeah. Even these kind of things have still got plenty of forgiveness for uh not so good shots like that. Not quite a pin high that not one. Not quite, bud. <laughs> One thing I was going to say about this, Andy, as well, is it actually got a urethane cover on it. Yes. So although a lot of the balls where you maybe see this kind of technology on, they don't have the urethane cover, they have... It's still uh, a premium ball. or yeah. elastomer. Yeah, so. it's still... I mean, first and foremost, it's got to be a really good performing ball, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right, so we're four down from James's selection, and uh, I can tell you, we're 100 yards out in terms of his final choice. Andy, so... I'm going to treat you here, mate. Okay. This is three for the price of one. All right. So... Yeah. I'll show you them all because people are obviously guessing. This is my wedge setup. Okay. And it's the Velke SM9. Now, I've used Velke all my life. I've tried different wedges. I've tried Callaway wedges, TaylorMade wedges, even Ping wedges, and nothing for me quite feels as good. I'm trying to think of a better word than good, but I can't. It's literally simply they are the best for me. Okay. And I know a lot of people kind of trust these wedges as well. Now, interesting story. I went and got fitted for these, like I recommend everyone should, like I said about the irons. Uh, and I looked at my stats from kind of where I miss greens and stuff. Looked obviously when I edit videos like yourself, you see where you miss, miss greens. Whenever I would hit a gap wedge and miss a green, it would be short. So I moved from a 52 in the SM8 to a 50 in the SM9. Okay. Because for me, that's just a little bit more long. So what are you carrying? 50? 50, what? 56, set at 55. Okay. And 60. So it's just a five yard gap. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite a nice Working gap, nice. I think. I love the 56 and the 60. Uh, nice high floaty shots I can open the 60 up and play it really nice get a little bit of stoppage on it it's yeah. versatile enough so the 60 for me is uh, 8 degree bounce M grind quite bad that I have to look at that isn't it but for me that I can just open that up and it sits nice and flat to so the floor so we just seen you play a bunker shot there uh, on the previous hole what, was you, what would you play from the bunker then flat lob wedge shot? lob wedge yeah. try and get the ball up land it as close to the flag as you dare yeah. with hopefully a good strike so it's going to have some neutral spin on it and it's going to start Okay. Uh, and again there were two decent shots weren't yeah, yeah, they so good. Um, Chris, my short game coach, thinks I should bin my 60 and okay. just use a 56 all the time, but then it's my club that I'm comfortable with, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. Element, yeah. Yeah. Um, right, I've got 120 yards here, and we're going to try and just knock this as close as we can. 50 degree. It's a beautiful strike. Sit. Oh my God, that could go in. That's wow. not a bad, uh, bad representation, is it, that one? To be fair, a great demo when we're just full stop. I'm just going to uh, see if we can zoom in on that. That is literally... Well, it's probably a gimme from back I here. I might anyway. even let you knock that in for birdie, Andy. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I love the pressure. In fact, Andy, you can use that ball from there. 
That's the, that's the trusty he's got after seeing that last seven iron. <laughs> I've got to say, a hugely impressive uh, demonstration of how to play wedges. Andy. Those vokies clearly work. Oh, he's giving me, he's actually... Uh, Come on, mate. He's now prepared to give me his you, ball. You take that next shot with them. I, the, 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 thanks for the trust. I will, uh, just hang on, I will, um, we're going to end it there. That was, first of all, come back on, Sorry. Come back on shot. <laughs> uh, really enjoyed that, mate. Yeah, me too, really Great fun. Great five clubs. I will put on screen now what my five guesses were. I can tell you, I got two out Did of five, you? right, yeah. Um, only because I, I thought the irons was a, I knew, yeah. you, I knew you really loved the irons. Um, and I had a feeling that the putter would be in there as well. Yeah. Because I think that, again, watching your videos, you're very keen on those two in particular. Yeah, we share those, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do, yeah. So, uh, thank you for watching. No doubt you'll all be aware of James's channel. Get over there. We've got a couple of videos uh, that we're filming each today on each other's channel. So, uh, Make sure you join in and watch out. And uh, yeah, we've had uh, what's up next, the match. We're going to swap clubs, are we? In fact, that one might already be on. There you go. There you go. Make sure you keep an eye out for Bye. it. Bye. Right. See, see you tomorrow. You, see you all soon. And thanks for watching. Soon? What about tomorrow? Tomorrow's far too <laughs>